morning from Newark, New Jersey. We have a lot planned for today, including that tonight I am going to attempt to stealth camp on the Atlantic City Boardwalk, the very first boardwalk in all of America. And it's also the boardwalk where Miss America started. And I actually used to come here every year growing up to watch the pageant. So Atlantic City is mostly known for the boardwalk and also for casinos and beaches. And despite the horrible weather, we are going to try to stealth camp right on the end of that boardwalk tonight. But first, I really want to wash my hair and shower, so we are at Planet Fitness. It is really funny to me that as a van lifer, I have been to so many Planet Fitness gyms that I mentally rate them at this point. So for example, this one had no shelf for my shampoo, so the floor is gross and I learned to put it in this pocket to adapt. And some gyms have great water pressure or free soap dispensers or only cold water. And most days, I just feel like my shower is Russian roulette. At least it keeps life interesting, I guess. Also, when I shower, it's a really great time for me to nonchalantly fill up this water bottle I used to fill up the water jug in my van for my sink. All right, so this is how I refill my water for my sink. It's super simple and technically free because I pay for it with my gym membership. And I use bungee cords to secure everything so it doesn't move around when I drive. And I always check the gray water before using it again after refilling my clean water because an overflow of gray water would be gross. <laughs> and welcome to the part of the day where I remove all of my dishes from the sink and then leave them on the counter, brush my teeth, and then I put them all back in the sink because I don't know, but you know, it's my routine at this point, and they say in van life, the best thing you can have is a routine. So I'm just trying to stick with my routine, really, is what's happening. Also, I'll show you where I take my toothbrush, and I feel like you're gonna appreciate it. All right, I don't know if you're ready for this, like the pure innovation, but... <laughs> So there is something you should know about me, and that is that if I have to drive a long distance, I rarely will just drive from point A to point B, but instead I will go on websites like Atlas Obscura and Only In Your State and find weird places to visit along the way. And today I found two very quirky, maybe a little weird places to visit, and I am very excited. And the first is the site of the 1916 shark attacks at Matawan Creek, the attacks that inspired the movie Jaws. So I was really fascinated to learn more about this original story, starting with it didn't happen in an ocean, but a small creek, and it killed four people and severely injured one other. According to the stories, these weren't even its first attacks. The shark had actually made its way north from the ocean on July 12th and would kill 14-year-old Lester Stilwell and 24-year-old Stanley Fisher first right here at this creek. Stanley Fisher was attacked by the shark when he went into the water to search for Lester, thinking that Lester had had an epileptic seizure not knowing about the shark, and Stanley would actually die in a hospital that evening from his wounds. Do you know what's crazy to me though, is that according to yesterdaysamerica.com, there were four shark attacks in the span of an hour and a half. Like after the first, why do people keep entering the water? I just am like shocked that like, one, people swam here, like it looks so gross, but two, like a shark in there. Sounds pretty crazy, but it's true apparently. So yeah, that is one pretty crazy story. But after the attacks, the town and press actually came to the creek with guns, nets, and dynamite trying to put an end to the shark attacks. And the shark was caught two days later at Raritan Creek, and the man who caught the shark actually put it on display and like sold tickets to go see it. And afterwards, when they dissected the shark, they found 15 pounds of human remains in its stomach. On average, there are eight deaths by sharks a year. Okay, eight. But this shark did half of that in a little over an hour, all while inspiring Jaws, which would become like the first big blockbuster. But I digress, on to the next stop. The tricky thing about visiting abandoned places is that no one wants to share the location online or like how to get there or like tips. They just wanna keep it as discreet as possible, which I completely understand. Um, so you have to either get really good at finding them or knowing where to look online to find information or know people. Um, that way, you know, like these places can stay and not be torn down. So I'm hoping that I figured out enough of a trick on this one, but we're gonna find out. All right, I hate where I have to park for this because I'm just legitimately on the side of like the highway and it's very clear that something is not right here. Um, I'll show you, I'll sh you'll see, um, if you can't already see. Um, I feel kind of weird leaving my van here, but we're gonna try this. So we're gonna, you know, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. All right, but we are gonna take off our flip-flops because that's a no. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. I'm 
so excited. Overall vibes. Oh, I see it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Overall vibes, pretty good. I don't feel like I'm being haunted. You can, I had a little heart attack there. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I love it. Welcome to the abandoned Brooks Bay Brick Factory. It was a factory built to produce bricks, but may never have even been able to produce a single one because in 1908, because of the deaths and disputes, the used factory actually was left sitting idle, but one night the caretaker and his wife lit a fire in the fireplace that ended up going out of control. They both died right here in the fire and the factory was abandoned. And now here you and I are. And let me know if you see any ghosts because I felt a little haunted, but also I think I'm just a little superstitious. <laughs> than I thought. Oh, I just, I love when you just find random holes and you're just like, what's going on in there? I don't know if any of you guys like exploring abandoned places, but like, I'm all down for this. I love this. But then like, I will never go inside there by myself. I won't be going in there. Nope, you cannot pay me. Christmas everyone. It's very festive around here. Well, that was a lot of fun. I <laughs> loved it so much. Um, yeah, I. if anyone knows any good abandoned places, message me on Instagram. I am doing a really big road trip soon, so I'll be near a little bit of everywhere. And I love these kind of places so much. I don't know guys, did we like this better or the abandoned place in Baltimore better? What do we think? All right, guys. So it is now time to stealth camp in Atlantic City. Got to find a place to sleep tonight. All right, so I have a place. <laughs> All right, so I have a place picked out to sleep tonight. Um, I found it on iOverlander and I hope it works out. And if it doesn't, you already know I'll be fine. Last week's vlog, it took me an hour to find a spot, but we still found a really good spot and it all works out. So no stress. This is actually really fun for me. Not a lot of traffic, which is a good sign. Maybe that there won't be a lot of people in the parking spot that I want. But I mean, actually I said nothing. You heard nothing. I don't want to jinx it. I take everything I just said back. So this right here is the end of the Atlantic City Boardwalk and this is where I will be sleeping hopefully tonight. Alright, so the moon is absolutely stunning and I don't have any camera equipment besides my iPhone so I'm gonna try to show you what it looks like but believe me when I tell you it is literally stunning. I don't know, I'm not a photographer, I, that's the best I can do but it's just believe me it's stunning. 
All right, I think this is my spot for the night. I've checked signage, I've checked everything else. I think I'm good, which means that tonight's parking would be about two and a half minutes just for the researching. I just used iOverlander, found this spot, and cross your fingers, there won't be any problems. I mean, I can't ever promise anything, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. So, so right now we are at like two and a half minutes and hopefully no knocks. All right, so good morning. I, we made it through the night, no knocks, no issues. Um, the wind was just really out of control to the point where I thought about actually leaving. My van was just like, <laughs> and the water from the ocean literally came up and out and it's like against the side of my van. Like it was so crazy. Um, so I, <laughs> besides that, it was a really good night. Woke up to a beautiful view. Um, no crazy sounds, so I don't know, I think I would give this spot 7 out of 10 because it is Atlantic City, so safety-wise, I was a little bit worried. I have a schedule for today, but as you can tell, I haven't decided if I'm going to follow it or not yet. <laughs> um, so we'll see. I do have a live interview at 3 o'clock for my podcast, Van Life Unfiltered, so I do need to be out of here and to a place with really good Wi-Fi by 3 o'clock. Actually, I have three bars right now. I might be able to do the podcast here. Will I stay here two nights? I don't know. I don't know. Can you hear the wind? It's so bad. <laughs> All right, so thanks for hanging out with me again. I had a really great time. I feel like we got to visit some really interesting and cool places. I feel like I don't really do that many hikes or, you know, like the stereotypical, like people who live in van kind of things. I like the abandoned places. I like um, just weird movie sets and stuff. So <laughs> I like to keep it interesting for sure. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out. I had a really great time. Actually, I'm going on a really big trip soon. Kind of has to do with me selling my van and me, you know, I, so I want to get a new van and build out a new van and do a whole series on that on here to help more people be able to start van life. Um, so I'm selling this van and I'm doing a new van build and it's been taking a while because this van hasn't been selling here on the East Coast. So some of my friends have convinced me that if I moved to the West Coast, it might sell better and I might enjoy my life more. <laughs> not to say that the East Coast in van life is not enjoyable. It's just apparently much more difficult. We'll figure it out together because I'm going to vlog the entire thing because yes, I'm heading West. I'm super excited about it though. I'm excited to vlog it with you guys. So if you have any recommendations of places I should go in the Southern United States, so I'm kind of going to go through 10 I love Nashville. I really want to go back um, through like Dallas, um, Texas, the Riverwalk, um, across that way into San Diego is kind of the route I want to go. So if you have any recommendations or maybe a better route I should take, because it might change. I haven't really planned it yet. I can't believe I'm leaving so soon. Um, if you have any recommendations, I would absolutely love them because, you know, like we're going on this trip together because that's what that's what we're doing. Like, you know, like we travel together. <laughs> um, so thanks again for hanging out and I will see you guys next Sunday for what is probably going to be my first in my road trip across America series. So I'm excited. I'll see you next week.